the national flag by henry ward beecher this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bill Mosley. The National Flag by Henry Ward Beecher. Address delivered to two companies of the Brooklyn 14th, many of them members of Plymouth Church. The church on that day contributed $3,000 to aid in the equipment of this regiment. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Psalm 60, verse 4 From the earliest periods, nations seem to have gone forth to war under some banner. Sometimes it has been merely the pennon of a leader, and was only a rallying signal. So, doubtless, the habit began of carrying banners to direct men in the confusion of conflict, that the leader might gather his followers around him when he himself was liable to be lost out of their sight. Later in the history of nations, the banner acquired other uses and peculiar significance from the parties, the orders, the houses, or governments that adopted it. At length, as consolidated governments drank up into themselves all these lesser independent authorities, banners became significant chiefly of national authority, and thus in our day every people has its peculiar flag. There is no civilized nation without its banner. A thoughtful mind, when it sees a nation's flag, sees not the flag but the nation itself and whatever may be its symbols its insignia he reads chiefly in the flag the government the principles the truths the history that belong to the nation that sets it forth when the french tricolor rolls out to the wind we see france when the new-found italian flag is unfurled we see resurrected italy when the other three-colored Hungarian flag shall be lifted to the wind, we shall see in it the long-buried but never dead principles of Hungarian liberty. When the united crosses of St. Andrew and St. George on a fiery ground set forth the banner of old England, we see not the cloth merely. There rises up before the mind the idea of that great monarchy this nation has a banner too and until recently wherever it streamed abroad men saw daybreak bursting on their eyes for until lately the american flag has been a symbol of liberty and men rejoiced in it not another flag on the globe had such an errand or went forth upon the sea carrying everywhere the world around such hope to the captive and such glorious tidings the stars upon it were to the pining nations like the bright morning stars of god and the stripes upon it were beams of morning light as at early dawn the stars shine forth even while it grows light and then as the sun advances that light breaks into banks and streaming lines of color the glowing red and intense white striving together and ribbing the horizon with bars effulgent so on the american flag stars and beams of many-colored light shine out together and wherever this flag comes and men behold it they see in its sacred and blazonry no ramping lion and no fierce eagle no embattled castles or insignia of imperial authority they see the symbols of light it is the banner of dawn it means liberty and the galley slave the poor oppressed conscript the trodden down creature of foreign despotism sees in the american flag that very promise and prediction of god 
the people which sat in darkness saw a great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up is this a mere fancy on the fourth of july seventeen seventy six the declaration of american independence was confirmed and promulgated already for more than a year the colonies had been at war with the mother country but until this time there had been no american flag the flag of the mother country covered us as during all our colonial period and each state that chose had a separate and significant state banner in seventeen seventy seven within a few days of one year after the declaration of independence and two years and more after the war began upon the fourteenth of june the congress of the colonies or the confederated states assembled and ordained this glorious national flag which now we hold and defend and advanced it full high before god and all men as the flag of liberty it was no holiday flag gorgeously emblazoned for gaiety or vanity it was a solemn national signal when that banner first unrolled to the sun it was the symbol of all those holy truths and purposes which brought together the colonial american congress consider the men who devised and set forth this banner the rutledges the pinckneys the jays the franklins the hamiltons the jeffersons the adamses these men were all either officially connected with it or consulted concerning it they were men that had taken their lives in their hands and consecrated all their worldly possessions for what for the doctrines and for the personal fact of liberty for the right of all men to liberty they had just given forth to the world a declaration of facts and faith out of which sprung the constitution and on which they now planted this new devised flag of our union if one then asks me the meaning of our flag i say to him it means just what concord and lexington meant what bunker hill meant it means the whole glorious revolutionary war which was in short the rising up of a valiant young people against an old tyranny to establish the most momentous doctrine that the world had ever known or has since known the right of men to their own selves and to their liberties in solemn conclave our fathers had issued to the world that glorious manifesto the declaration of independence a little later that the fundamental principles of liberty might have the best organization they gave to this land our imperishable constitution our flag means then all that our fathers meant in the revolutionary war it means all that the declaration of independence meant it means all that the constitution of our people organizing for justice for liberty and for happiness meant our flag carries american ideas american history and american feelings beginning with the colonies and coming down to our time in its sacred heraldry in its glorious insignia it has gathered and stored chiefly this supreme idea divine right of liberty in man every color means liberty every thread means liberty every form of star and beam or stripe of light means liberty not lawlessness not license but organized institutional liberty liberty through law and laws for liberty this american flag was the safeguard of liberty 
not an atom of crown was allowed to go into its insignia. Not a symbol of authority in the ruler was permitted to go into it. It was an ordinance of liberty by the people for the people. That it meant. That it means. And by the blessing of God, that it shall mean to the end of time. For God Almighty be thanked that when base and degenerate southern men desired to set up a nefarious oppression at war with every legend and every instinct of old American history, they could not do it under our bright flag. Its stars smote them with light like arrows shot from the bow of God. They must have another flag for such work and they forged an infamous flag to do an infamous work, and God be blessed, left our bright and starry banner untainted and untouched by disfigurement and disgrace. I thank them that they took another flag to do the devil's work, and left our flag to do the work of God. So may it ever be that men that would forge oppression shall be obliged to do it under some other banner than the stars and the stripes. If ever the sentiment of our text, then, was fulfilled, it has been in our glorious American banner. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee. Our fathers were God-fearing men. Into their hands God committed this banner, and they have handed it down to us. And I thank God that it is still in the hands of men that fear him and love righteousness. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed, and displayed it shall be advanced full against the morning light, and born with the growing and the glowing day, it shall take the last ruddy beams of the night, and from the Atlantic wave clear across with eagle flight to the Pacific. That banner shall float, meaning all the liberty which it has ever meant. From the north, where snows and mountain ice stand solitary, clear to the glowing tropics and the gulf. That banner that has hitherto waved shall wave and wave forever. Every star, every band, every thread and fold significant of liberty. The speaker paused to check the too demonstrative enthusiasm of the audience and continued. I do not doubt your patriotism. I know it is hard for men that are full of feeling not to give expression to it. Yet excuse me if I request you to refrain from demonstrations of applause while I am speaking. It is not because I think Sunday too good a day, nor the church too holy a place for patriotic Christian men to express their feelings at such a time as this and in behalf of such sentiments, but because by too frequent repetition applause becomes stale and common that I make this request. Besides, outward expression is not our way. We are rather of a silent stock. We let our feelings work inwardly so that they may have deeper channels and fuller floods. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Because of that very truth we will display it, not in mere national pride, not any wantonness of vanity, not merely because we have been reared to honor it, not because we have an hereditary reverence for it, but with a full intelligence of what it is and what it means 
and because we love the truth that is written in lines of living light all over it we will advance it and maintain it against all comers from earth and hell the history of this banner is all on the side of rational liberty under it rode washington and his armies washington much beloved and much abused by those that are his eulogists who have described all that he was except his love of liberty which has been forgotten but washington would be like a man without a heart if you left out of him that high almost imperial chivalric love of liberty for every human being under this banner rode he and his armies before it burgoyne laid down his arms it waved on the highlands at west point it floated over old fort montgomery as over another montgomery at that time montgomery alabama was the capital of the southern confederacy afterwards removed to richmond virginia as over another montgomery it shall float when arnold would have surrendered these valuable fortresses and precious legacies his night was turned into day and his treachery was driven away by the beams of light from this starry banner it cheered our army, driven out from around New York, and in their painful pilgrimages through New Jersey, sacred state of New Jersey, small but comely and rich and imperishable in the drops of precious blood that have redeemed her sainted soil from barrenness. In New Jersey, more than in almost every other state, grows the trailing arbutus. Methinks it is sacred drops of pilgrim blood that come forth in beauteous flowers on this sandiest of soils for this sweet blossom that lays its cheek on the very snow is the true pilgrim's mayflower this banner streamed in light over the soldiers heads at valley forge and at morristown it crossed the waters rolling with ice at trenton and when its stars gleamed in the cold morning with victory a new day of hope dawned on the despondency of this nation when south carolina in the revolutionary struggle utterly forgot what she never well remembered courage and personal liberty and yielded herself the only one ignominious and infamous of all the revolutionary band of states that gave in an adhesion again to the british government when she forgot courage and personal liberty and yielded herself up and made her peace solitary and alone with british generals then it was this banner that led on the virginia forces who conquered both the british and carolinian armies and brought the state again into our confederacy alas that the head should become the tail alas that old virginia that brought back the recreant south carolina should be tied to and be dragged about the rebel camp at the tail of that same south carolina and when at length the long years of war were drawing to a close underneath the folds of this immortal banner sat washington while yorktown surrendered its hosts and our revolutionary struggle ended with victory it waved thus over that whole historic period of struggle and over that period in which sat that immortal convention that framed our constitution it cheered the hardy pioneers that then began to go forth and explore the western wilds in all their desperate strifes with savage indians it was to them a memorial and symbol of comfort our states grew up under it 
and when our ships began to swarm upon the ocean to carry forth our commerce and inspired by the genial flame of liberty to carry forth our ideas and great britain arrogantly demanded the right to intrude her search warrants upon american decks then up went the lightning flag and every star meant liberty and every stripe streamed defiance the gallant fleet of lake erie have you forgotten it the thunders that echoed to either shore were overshadowed by this broad ensign of our american liberty those glorious men that went forth in the old ship constitution carried this banner to battle and to victory the old ship is alive yet the new traders of the south could not burn her they did not sink her and she has been hauled out of the reach of hostile hands and traitorous bands bless the name bless the ship bless her historic memory and bless the old flag that waves over her yet the perrys the lawrences the biddies the macdonalds the porters and a host of others whose names cannot die do you forget that they fought under this national banner and fought for liberty how glorious then has been its origin how glorious has been its history how divine is its meaning in all the world is there another banner that carries such hope such grandeur of spirit such soul inspiring truth as our dear old american flag made by liberty made for liberty nourished in its spirit carried in its service and never not once in all the earth made to stoop to despotism never did i say alas only to that worst despotism southern slavery has it bowed remember every one of you that the slaveholders of the south alone of all the world have put their feet upon the american flag and now this banner has been put on trial it has been condemned for what has it failed of duty has liberty lost color by it have moths of oppression eaten its folds has it refused to shine on free men and given its light to despots no it has been true brave loyal it has become too much a banner of liberty for men who mean and plot despotism remember citizen remember christian soldier the american flag has been fired upon by americans and trodden down because it stood in the way of slavery this is all that you have reaped for your long patience for your many compromises for your generous trust and your christian forbearance you may now see through all the south just what kind of patriotism slavery breeds east of the mountains i suppose you might travel through all washington state and not see one star nor one stripe. Thank God Washington is dead and has not lived to see the infamy and the disgrace that have fallen upon that recreant state. In all North Carolina, I fear you shall find not one American flag. In Florida, you shall not find one. In Georgia, I know not, except in the mountain fastnesses if there be one with a like exception there is not one in alabama neither is there one in repudiating mississippi nor in louisiana nor in texas ungrateful nor in arkansas in all this waste and wilderness of states 
this banner has gone down and a miserable counterfeit a poor forgery has been run up upon the recreant pole to stand in the stead of the glorious old revolutionary historic american flag and how is it in the great middle brood of states as a star is obscured for an instant by a passing cloud and then shines forth again so in maryland the flag and its stars were hid for a day but they now flame out again maryland is safe all honor to delaware she has never flinched in kentucky and tennessee and missouri the banner is at half-mast uncertain whether it will go up or down and of all these states i can say with all my heart and soul in the language of the apocalypse i would thou wert cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth god hates lukewarm patriotism as much as lukewarm religion and we hate it too we do not believe in hermaphrodite patriots we want men to be men from the crown of their head to the sole of their foot and to say no to oppression and yes to liberty and to say both as if thunder spoke but this is not the worst that this banner should have been lowered by the hands of recreants it was upon these streaming bars and upon these bright stars that every one of that immense concentric range of guns was aimed when sumter was lifted up in the midst almost like another witnessing calvary and that flag which russia could not daunt nor france intimidate nor england conquer has gone down beneath the fire of treacherous states within our own union and do you know that when it was fallen in the streets of a southern city it was trailed hooted at pierced with swords men that have sat in the senate of the united states ran out to trample upon it it was fired on and slashed by the mob it was dragged through the mud it was hissed at and spit upon and so it was carried through southern cities that our flag which has found on the ocean in the indian islands in sumatra in japan in china and in all the world no enemy either barbarian or civilized that dared to touch it with foul aspersion that this flag should in our own nation and by our own people be spit upon and trampled under foot is more than the heart of man can bear and what was its crime if it had forgotten its origin if it had gone over to oppression if it had set these stars like so many blazing jewels in the tiara of imperial despotism i should not have wondered at its going down if it had been recreant to its trust of ideas of liberty i should have expected to see it go down but it has not failed to defend liberty have there been quartered on its armorial bearings any bastard symbol significant of oppression none it is guilty of nothing but of too much liberty its stars have too much promise in them for those that are born slaves and its stripes stream too bright a light to those that sit in darkness that is the crime of our national banner and now god speaks by the voice of his providence saying 
lift again that banner advance it full and high to your hand and to yours god and your country commit that imperishable trust you go forth self-called or rather called by the trust of your countrymen and by the spirit of your god to take that trailing banner out of the dust and out of the mire and lift it again where god's rains can cleanse it where god's free air can cause it to unfold and stream as it has always floated before the wind god bless the men that go forth to save from disgrace the american flag accept it then in all its fullness of meaning it is not a painted rag it is a whole national history it is the constitution it is the government it is the free people that stand in the government on the constitution forget not what it means and for the sake of its ideas rather than its mere emblazonry be true to your country's flag by your hands lift it but let your lifting it be no holiday display it must be advanced because of the truth that flag must go to the capital of this nation and it must go not hidden not secreted not in a case or covering but advanced full high displayed bright as the sun clear as the moon terrible as an army with banners for a single week that disgraceful crook that shameful circuit may be needful but the way from new england the way from new york the way from new jersey and pennsylvania to washington lies right through baltimore and that is the way the flag must and shall go the route through baltimore was closed and for weeks washington was reached through annapolis but that flag borne by ten thousand and thrice ten thousand hands from connecticut from massachusetts god bless the state and all her men from shipbuilding maine from old granite new hampshire from the vermont of bennington and green mountain boy patriotism from rhode island not behind any in zeal and patriotism from new york from Ohio, from Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, and Delaware, and the other loyal states, that flag must be carried, bearing every one of its insignia, to the sound of the drum and the fife, into our national capital, until Washington shall seem to be a forest, in which every tree supports the American banner. And it must not stop there. The country does not belong to us from the lakes only to Washington, but from the lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. The flag must go on. The land of Washington shall see Washington's flag again. The land that sits in darkness, and in which the people see no light, shall yet see light dawn, and liberty flash from the old American banner. It must see Charleston again and float again over every fort in charleston harbor it must go further to the alligator state and stand there again and sweeping up through all plantations and over all fields of sugar and rice and tobacco and every other thing it must be found in every state till you touch the mississippi and bathing in its waters it must go across and fill texas with its sacred light nor must it stop when it floats over every one of the states that flag must stand bearing its whole historic spirit and original meaning in every territory of this nation have you not had enough mischief of slavery do you not see what men it breeds it hatches cockatrice's eggs 
slavery breeds traitors in the masters and miserable slaves in the subjects slavery is the abominable poison that has circulated in the body politic and corrupted this whole nation almost past healing blessed be god there is a medicine found now having had experience and having seen what slavery does to the slave and what it does to the slave is the least part of the evil the slave is to be envied in the comparison i would to god that the white man were half as little hurt by slavery seeing how it blights the heart's core how it corrupts the most sacred sentiments how it brings down natures born for better things to the degradation of despotism having seen these things can you i ask every man that has conscience or reason or hope or fear or love in his soul can you meet god almighty's judgment or the inquiring eye of god if while you live you permit that evil to roll unchecked three thousand miles to the pacific ocean let then this banner go again into every recreant state and float over every inch of territory saying defiance to slavery all hail to liberty nor is it enough that that banner shall stand and merely reassert its authority it is time now that that banner shall do as much for each man in our own country as it will in every other land on the globe if i go to constantinople and a mob threatens me that banner shines like lightning out of heaven and i am safe if i go to jerusalem or among the bedouin arabs i have but to show that symbol and i am safe if i go to africa and skirt its coasts among the natives and exhibit the colors of my country i am safe i can go around the globe under the protection of this flag but it is denied me to go to washington i cannot go from my door to the capital of this nation because the american flag does not defend americans on their own soil i cannot go to virginia nor north carolina nor south carolina nor florida nor georgia nor alabama nor mississippi nor louisiana nor texas nor arkansas nor to most of kentucky and of tennessee we have not had a government for fifty years that dared to do a thing that slavery did not wish to have done i suppose that within the last twenty years uncounted multitudes of men have been mulcted in property mobbed hung murdered for whose wrongs and blood no government has ever made any inquisition. It is permitted to this hour to one man to maltreat, to murder, to rob, to strip, to destroy another man in Nashville, in Memphis, in New Orleans, in Mobile, in Charleston, and even in Richmond, close up under the eye of government there has never been an hour for the last twenty-five years when government would lift a voice or stretch out a hand to protect northern men against the outrages committed upon them by men at the south now i demand that when the american flag is next unfurled in south carolina it shall protect me there as it protects a south carolinian in new york i demand that it shall protect me in mobile as it protects a mobilian here i demand that this shall be a common country and that all men shall enjoy the imperishable rights which the constitution guarantees to every american citizen 
I demand that there shall be such a victory of this flag as shall make the whole and undivided land the common possession of all and every one of its citizens. If any man asks me whether I will consent to a compromise, I reply, Yes, I love compromises. They are dear to me if I may make them. Give me a compromise that shall bring peace. Let me say, hang the ring-leading traitors, suppress their armies, give peace to their fields, lift up the banner and make a highway in which every true American citizen, minding his own business, can walk unmolested, free the territories, and keep them free. That is our compromise. Give to us the doctrine of the fathers. Renew the Declaration of Independence. Refill the Constitution with the original blood of liberty. Destroy traitors and treason. Make the doctrine of secession a byword and a hissing. Make laws equal. Let that justice for which they were ordained be the same in Maine or Carolina. To the rich and to the poor, the bond and the free. And thus we will compromise. But as long as compromise means yokes upon us and license to them, silence for liberty and open mouth freedom to despotism, so long compromise is a devil's juggle. No man that is a free man and a Christian should be caught in any such snare as that. I ask for nothing except that which the fathers meant. I ask for the fulfillment of Washington's prayer. I ask for the carrying out of the designs of those sacred men that sat in conclave at Independence Hall in Philadelphia and framed our immortal Constitution. I ask for liberty in New York, in Carolina, in Alabama, in every state, and in every territory. I ask for it throughout the whole land. I ask no northern advantage. It is a mere geographical accident that liberty is in the north. It is not because it is the north, but because the north is free that I ask for the ascendancy of northern principles. Ah, that Daniel Webster had lived to see what we do, that strong man whose faith failed him in a fatal hour of ambition. I will read from a speech of his better days, one of the noblest passages that ever issued from the uninspired pen of man. It is appropriate for this hour. Quote, when my eyes shall be turned to behold for the last time the sun in heaven, may I not see him shining on the broken and dishonored fragments of a once glorious union, on states dissevered, discordant, belligerent, on a land rent with civil feuds, or drenched, it may be, in fraternal blood. Let their last feeble and lingering glance rather Behold the gorgeous ensign of the Republic, now known and honored throughout the earth, still full high advanced, its arms and trophies streaming in their original luster, not a stripe erased or polluted, nor a single star obscured, bearing for its motto no such miserable interrogatory as, What is all this worth? nor those other words of delusion and folly, liberty first and union afterwards. But everywhere, spread all over in characters of living light, blazing on all its ample folds, as they float over the sea and over the land, and in every wind under the whole heavens, that other sentiment, dear to every true American heart. 
liberty, and union, now and forever, one and inseparable. End quote. God grant it. God grant it. You live in a civilized age. You go on a sacred mission. The prayers and sympathies of Christendom are with you. You go to open again the shut-up fountains of liberty and to restore this disgraced banner to its honor. You go to serve your country in the cause of liberty. And if God brings you into conflict ere long with those misguided men of the South, when you see their miserable, new-vamped banner, remember what that flag means. Treason, slavery, despotism. Then look up and see the bright stars and the glorious stripes over your own head, and read in them, Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. And if you fall in that struggle, may some kind hand wrap around you the flag of your country, and may you die with its sacred touch upon you. It shall be sweet to go to rest lying in the folds of your country's banner, meaning as it shall mean, liberty and union, now and forever. We will not forget you. You go forth from us not to be easily and lightly passed over. The waves shall not close over the places which you have held. But when you return, not as you go, many of you inexperienced and many of you unknown, you shall return from the conquests of liberty with a reputation and a character established forever to your children and your children's children. It shall be an honor. It shall be a legend. It shall be a historic truth. And your posterity shall say, Our fathers stood up in the day of peril and laid again the foundations of liberty that were shaken. And in their hands the banner of our country streamed forth like the morning star upon the night. God bless you. End of The National Flag by Henry Ward Beecher Recording by Bill Mosley, Prellsburg, Texas, USA